In 2014, the New York Times published a story about Janet Navarro, a mother of a four-year-old who at the time was working at a Starbucks in Southern California. Navarro not only had to battle a three-hour commute, but she also rarely learned her schedule more than three days before the start of a work week. The unpredictability of her schedule bordered on cruelty. She was asked to work until 11 p.m. on Friday and report again at 4 a.m., a practice that workers like her knew as clopening. Navarro's unpredictable work schedule made her life incredibly complicated. Finding someone to take care for a four-year-old is challenging, but it is especially hard when you're constantly required to do so with only a few days' notice. But Navarro's schedule was not being prepared by a sadistic manager. It was made by an algorithm created by a company called Kronos, a vendor that Starbucks hired to optimize its labor force. Starbucks updated its practices immediately after the Times ran Navarro's story. Yet practices such as clopening still prevail in the low-wage sector of the US economy. For the purpose of this chapter, however, Navarro's story illustrates two important aspects of the effects of technology on labor. The first is the simple idea of labor displacement, which is embodied in the fact that Navarro's schedule was not being managed by a human, but by an algorithm. The second is the idea that technology can decrease the quality of work, an effect known as precarization, which is defined as reducing the material and psychological welfare of a job. In recent years, people have grown concerned about technological labor displacement and the precarization of work. But these concerns are not new. Concerns about the influence of technology on labor are as old as the introduction of printing in Europe. As printing spread, monastic scribes attempted to ban presses, declaring them demonic devices. Centuries later, English Luddites became famous for opposing steam-powered looms, but the rage of Luddites was not only about labor displacement. It was the abysmal labor conditions of the Industrial Revolution, a clear example of the precarization of work. In the 20th century, fears of automation took over the public dialogue in the US, at least twice. In the 1960s, fears of technological displacement grew after Time magazine published a popular article in 1961 on the automation jobless. Not fired, just not hired, the subhead continued, building a case on the effects of technology on the future of labor. Recently, displacement fears revived together with reports claiming that almost half of all jobs could be automated and that this change could be happening 10 times faster than and at three times the scale of the Industrial Revolution. But contrary to this study, most of the academic literature on labor automation has embraced a less alarmist approach. Labor economists have been eager to emphasize that technology is not only a substitute for labor, but also a complement. So it creates jobs with one hand and takes them away with the other. Economists agree that technology is labor saving, but many also say that increases the productivity of the workers does not replace. These increases in productivity plus new complementarities can increase aggregate demand and stimulate the need for more human work. A classic example of the complex interaction between technology and labor is the introduction of automatic teller machines or ATMs. ATMs did not eliminate human tellers as some feared. In fact, the number of human tellers in the US actually grew modestly after ATMs were introduced from about 500,000 in 1980 to about 550,000 in 2010. ATMs did not eliminate the job of tellers, but they transformed it. This was in part due to the lower cost of opening new bank branches, which together with other factors such as more bank-friendly regulations, contributed to new bank teller jobs with different responsibilities. A more modern example of the complex interaction between technology and labor can be found in China. In cities like Nanjing, it is common for restaurants to have QR codes on every table. The QR code allows customers to order food and pay their bills using their phones. But this technology does not replace the need for human servers. It only automates a few of their tasks, allowing them to focus on things other than taking orders or collecting checks. 
Servers are still needed to carry food, clear tables, greet customers, deal with a special request, and maintain a civilized environment at the restaurant. The example also shows that automation often does not replace entire jobs because it involves tasks. That is why stories that focus on the automation of jobs tend to overestimate the impact of automation compared to studies focused on the automation of tasks. The question that we should be asking is not will a robot take my job, but how will the labor market change with technology? In response to that question, economists have made a few predictions. On the one hand, there is an apparent consensus that while changes in technology have important effects on labor on the short term, they do not appear to affect the need for labor on the long run. Using data from the International Federation of Robotics, Gretz and Michaels report that between 1993 and 2007, the introduction of robots did not reduce total employment. Although they do find evidence that robots reduce the employment share of low-skilled workers. Other authors also find a negative correlation between the stock of robots in a country and unemployment. On the other hand, there is no clear consensus on predictions about the redistributive effects of technology. Some scholars anticipate an increased polarization of the labor force and increased inequality. Yet some scholars have arrived at the opposite conclusion when focusing on the replacement of tasks rather than occupations. Another angle of this discussion has been to focus on the types of jobs being replaced by new technologies. In his book, Prediction Machines, Ajay Agrawal focuses on the fact that artificial intelligence technologies are mostly good for prediction, so he forecasts the effects of AI on labor by assuming that its main effect is a reduction in the cost of predictions. For instance, lower prediction costs could flip the shopping then shipping model of online retailers to a shipping then shopping model. This is because in a world where stores can predict the items that a person may buy, business models in which stores ship items and learn from the ones that are returned may become viable. The fact that technology will affect the future of work is undeniable. But technology is not the only force affecting labor. The future of work also depends on global value chains, the increasing concentration of complex economic activities, the rising education levels of the global south, and international migration. To better manage this impact, we need to understand how people react to the impact of technology on jobs compared to other forces. <laughs>